Hi, my name is Tim and I work with startups here at Kia. This video is intended to give you a larger presentation of pre-to-typing, a tool that I really, really think that you should listen carefully to. I met pre-to-typing just over a year ago and it has really helped me in building new businesses. So let's take it away. Pre-to-typing is, um, is best explained by giving you an example. This is back in the 1980s. IBM was ruling the whole setup of the q to keyboard, the keyboard that we have in front of us. They were selling typewriters, they were selling personal computers, computers, stationary computers, etc. But they wanted to sell some more. So IBM was doing what all companies should do, start talking to the clients and saying, okay, who's using our keyboard, who's not using our keyboard? The group that is really using the keyboard in the 1980s is script writers, secretaries, etc. The other group that is not using the, the keyboard is, could be a CEO, and he could not use the keyboard. He was really, it was too far from the head, actually down to his fingers on the, on the keyboard. So IBM said, okay, how do we solve this? Because of course we have the script writers, the secretaries, etc. But we really want to go into this other part of the target group. So they found out that they need to do some trend studies. What is the next big thing that will come? And what should IBM do? Back in the 1980s, they found out that this was not another way of typing. It was a way of speeching. So speech to text. IBM was completely flabbergasted about this and saying, wow, think about if we take this to the market. So IBM was doing the calculations and they were talking to all the clients and the clients was really amazed saying, wow, if you can do speech to text, this will be the next big thing. It will be an effective booster that we cannot think of. IBM were doing the calculation and this was billions. It was not a small project, it was billions and it was actually five years to come up with this and end up with the product. But that's not a, that's not a gamble. I mean, every, all the clients are looking into this. So the board and the, the board of directors was meeting up and they're about to sign the contract of this is the focus for the next five years is to bring this to the market. And this cheering and all the people happy about this, suddenly one guy from the board raises his hand and saying, sorry, how do we know if this is just a good idea? And people look at him saying, excuse me, have you read the papers for today? This is elaborated. All the clients, I mean, everybody's here wants this. Oh yeah, you're, you're right. I'll take down my hand. So after a couple more minutes thinking, and the champagne bottle is there, it's about to be sabled. Actually, he raises his hand again and says, excuse me, if I get $20,000 and I get one month, I'll come up with some new testing that actually prove that this is just, I mean, a good idea. And people are like, okay, he's a trusted person. Okay, okay, if it's billion or billion of, and 20,000, same, same. 60 months, 61 months, same, same. Okay, go ahead. And what he does is actually quite clever. He gathers 20 people from the target group that is using the keyboard on a single daily basis. And 20 people from the target group that is not and cannot find out to use the QT keyboard. The CEOs. So he gathers them in one big room. And one by one they come into a room. And in that room he tells them to say, please go and speak in the mic. There's a mic connected to a computer, to a screen, there's a chair, there's a table and nothing else. The person goes over and says, Hello, and says hello. Wow, okay, it might be the hi, hello, how are you, my name is. So I'll try some other words. And the person really tried some words and I'm like, wow, this is really happening. So whatever the person said simultaneously after it was written on the screen. And the person said, is this the launch? Just sit down and, and have a look at this and try and break the system. Try and speak slowly, fast, try and go, Go accents, try and, and really do abbreviations, etc. Try and break the system. Stay here for a couple of hours. After three hours, the person comes into an interview room. And here the person from IBM is kind of, I should never have asked for that month and $20,000 because people are completely happy and they really want this. So the interview round is, okay, I, I, I sense you really like this. I really like this. This is fantastic. Okay. But at the end, the final question is, so... Summing up, you really, really like this and you really are fond of this. Yes, I do. So you're also ready to purchase this to your company. No, we're not. And this was the 40 people all saying no. 
The 20 people using the keyboard on a single daily basis says the following. Well, I've, I've just been sitting in there for three hours. I do only write, I only type write, and my throat is sore. What about after a year? After half a year just? Well, you're right. IBM should have thought about that. The next thing, the other group, the CEOs are saying, listen, a lot of the things that I sit with, nobody can hear. It's salaries, it's sackings, it's, it's bonuses, it's purchase, uh, I mean, M&A. This is, this, is, this is not something I can have other people hear about. Oh, you're right, good. So this was actually the two main reasons why IBM put this on the shelf. But what's the pre-type here? Well, there's something I haven't told you yet. The thing is that yes, the person came into the room, listening to the, uh, sitting to with the, in front of the mic, but the mic was also connected to a room next door. See, this person next door was, was listening to this and typewriting exactly with no mistakes. But the thing here is that the person sitting in front of the microphone got the impression that this product existed. And this is where we kind of, if I have just gone focus groups, I could get people saying, I would like to purchase this because it sounds such a good idea. The thing is when they realize this, so they actually think they, they feel that they, they have an experience of this is existing, they don't want to purchase this. See, what I want to show you here is that there is a big, big difference. Actually, there could be a big difference between a good idea and a good business idea. And the whole selling part is extremely important for bringing a business idea into a sustainable level. And this is what pretotyping is all about. If you look at the word pretotyping and you stretch it a bit, it says pretend o typing. So what I want to do here is pretend as if the speech success exists in order for, for, for the clients to find out if you want to purchase this. I'm helping them and I'm helping me as a company. What is an idea? An idea is a guess. Well, what is a mistake then? What's a fail? That is data. And this is all about failing. And then, Tim, are you, are you crazy? Are you, are you saying I should fail? Yes, I do. But I'll come to that. This tool, pretotyping, is developed within Google for the last five years by this gentleman, Mr. Alberto Savoia. He's not any Googler. He's actually the founder of Google AdWords, and he made plus 40 billion US dollars to the company last year. So when a guy like of his caliber asks if I can do another project within Google, you get the answer, yes. And five years ago, he started the following. He said, why is it that Google makes so many mistakes? I love the mistakes you and I never hear about, but we hear about Google Wave, Google Health, etc. But they make a lot of mistakes. They're not fond of that. But he says, well, how can that be with the best employees of the world? The most passionate employees of the world, how can that be that we make so many mistakes? He said, can I put that into a formula? Can I actually find out where mistakes come from? What we can do about them, if we can do anything, and put this into this formula so we can spread this to the rest of the world so you and I can actually learn about this. Just give you a couple of facts. These are not enlightening in any way, but 90% of all apps make no money. Four out of five startups lose all investors' money. And 80% of all new restaurants close within one year. Whoa, Tim, are you really trying to not encourage me here? No, I am. I want you to learn and really find out fast, is your idea a good idea or is it a good business idea? Just look at these statistics. These are made with the largest analytical bureau of the world, Nielsen. And these are year by year, a pattern is 80% of all new ideas, being services or products, will fail. And why do they fail? Well, there are three basic elements and two of them are good to know. The last one I helped you a bit here is, is colored orange. Well, the launch, take the IBM example again, the speech to text. I guarantee you IBM would have go, gone all in here to say, look, we exist. And they, I think the launch will be quite fantastic. The operation, the use of the product or service is also where, why, why fail occurs. But again, in, this, in the speech to text IBM example, here we have a situation where the software, of course it will work. It might be that uh, the smallest accent in, in, in Denmark did not uh, be, be in the first version, but, but I guarantee it will be working well. But the premise was the problem. The premise was that actually people didn't want it at the end because 
either they've got it in the throat or they could not hear this. So understand really why is the premise there? Are you ready to go? Or is this just a good idea that you have a lot of feelings about? This is taken out of a context. Professor Robert Carraway wrote a blog post about big data and patterns in big data. I have big respect about patterns in big data. But the thing is, we always put our own kind of gut feel into this. And the thing is, if you start writing a business plan, let's say 42 pages, I mean, you can make it look fantastic. You can squeeze and tweak and tune a model, add some numbers, some customer statistics, etc., and find out that you have a hockey stick. Your growth will go like this. Well, who are you trying to cheat? Because when you meet the market, it might not be that looks as if it in your business plan. And that's the whole idea. The world does not need more data. We have the data in order actually to set up your business plan and, for, and get it validated up against the market. So in its essence, pre typing is all about validating the market. Is there a market that would like to purchase, buy and, and acquire your product, your service? But, and, and you have to do this extremely cheap and fast. Don't use a lot of time and money on this. And as I said with the pretendo typing, this is about giving the illusion that something exists in order for the clients to find out, do I want this or don't I want this? And this is good knowledge to know before you start adding a lot of time, resources, brand, I mean, all your, your valuable resources. So Tim, what about prototyping, prototyping? Well, I'm not trying to make you not prototype anymore. And I'm not trying to say this is a potato potato debate. Prototyping is really good for something. Prototyping is really good for something else. The prototyping part, is to find out about your, your product. How should I build it? How much does it cost to build it? Should I source it from China, etc., etc.? These are more the nuts and bolts questions. And the investment horizon or the time you work with it is a bit longer than prototyping. Whereas you go on prototyping, these are more the consumer. And I mean, will they purchase it if I build it? If I build it, will they purchase more than once? And that's the whole segment here where you will look at the more market validation, whereas prototyping is your product validation, a big difference. To put this into a, to a context, so when you start in this arrow, you start on the left side. You say, okay, here I understand the market. Here I really understand what is the need, the pain in the market that I need to come with a new product or service in order to fulfill. And customers, I mean, focus groups are good at that. They're good at the customer, uh, kind of the, the, the feedback on this, but it's not good as a validation. Because I can create 20 people, raise their hand and say, that's a fantastic product, just like IBM did. All the people wanted this until they realized it and found out, no, I don't want that. So in the next phase, after the kind of the customer insights, we say, what idea do I want to build? And from there, you normally go into the production side. Whereas I have a middle side segment here saying, no, nah, let's prototype it. Let's see if this is part of the 20% that will succeed or part of the 80% that I, in this slide, have put into rest in peace. I don't mean rest in peace. What you can do with it is take it back and say, let's try with a different pricing, a different target group, a different functionality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, you start executing. I'm not saying that you should not know what it costs because if you start to go with a new product and it costs you 100 DKK to develop, you should not pre-to-type it with 70 DKK, because then you'd have a business case. What I want you to do is to become a serial entrepreneur. And pre-to-typing is a fantastic tool to become that, because what we do here is we fail fast. With the, with the, the, the setup here on without pre-to-typing, you test a couple of ideas. But the problem, the red box is it's expensive and it's slow. Still 80% will fail, yes. And then you have 20% that will succeed. Now, after pre-typing, the method where you go out and validate it up against the market, I want you to test not just 10, 20% more ideas. I want you to test a lot of more ideas. I mean, let's say you, you double that. You could double your, your level of ideas tested. And notice this. There are no mistakes that are slow. Slow failures is a failure. Whereas fast failure, and this is when I, when I was in, at November at Alberto and to find out about this a year ago, I said, okay, but I mean, 80% still failing Alberto. Haven't you done anything about that? No. 
it will fail eventually. So let's do that we find out fast and cheap by small experiments before we do the big investments of time, resources, funds, etc. We found out and find out what the 20% are that will succeed. What I want you to do is to become a serial entrepreneur. I want you to kill your baby and whoa, that sounds a little harsh. But what I want you to see is, is a metaphor here because are there any ugly babies out there? A lot but just not our own. Our own baby is beautiful. And this goes with your idea as well, your business concept of your new product or service. And the thing is you start becoming protectionist. You start protecting your idea. You start feeding your idea. And the more you feed it, the more you want to see it walk or else you're a failure. Well, not in my objective. Well, I want you to fail fast to find out if this baby is a good idea or is it a good business idea. And that's the whole notion of this, is to become a serial entrepreneur that finds out fast, okay, how does the market respond to this? Well, not good. Is, can I do another prototype on this, another prototype? And at the end you say, no, the market does not respond as I thought it would. And that's the problem. We, th we take our own beliefs about this and say, okay, this is the market response. I want to do this. I want you to prove it. God feeling is over. God feeling is good in the idea phase. But I want you to prove it up against the market and find out, is there a market before you start using all your time? This is where a lot of startups, they, they strand. They strand because they use time, resources, etc. And after they invested a lot, they need to see this work. But what if the premise is not there? What if the market is not ready for this product? Let me give you a small case just to show you a prototype, which is not the IBM example. Because prototyping was not around in the 1980s when the IBM case was running. But this is an, a true uh, prototyping case with a Danish company called Kilroy. Kilroy is a travel agency. But they have a problem. The problem is they have done such a good marketing campaign. They said, go before it's too late. So people think that after they're 26, they cannot go with Kilroy anymore. Well, so what do they offer the people that have been to Burma or to, to Thailand with their backs, uh, racks are gone? What, what, what can they go with? Well, they thought, could we come up with a product called work abroad? So you just start working in a different country. They have all the products on the shelf, which is the visa application. They have the, they have the travel, they have the insurance, they have the stay, the accommodation, they have the car, etc. But they don't have the job. Uh, they could have, this could have been a huge debate, boardroom debate, uh, management debate, a lot of whiteboard talks, a lot of papers written. What they said, let's use five weeks to find out if there exists a market of this. First, they created a Google ad where they said, hey, come travel with us. And, and by seeing this, I don't think that you would see and say, oh yeah, that's a prototype. That, that does not exist. Well, it exists. It's just a pretend type. In the sense, they want to drive traffic to find out, let's say that this was exposed to a thousand people. How many click on that? Well, that's an initial level of interest to find out, are people interested in this part? When they get into the page, they meet a landing page. And this landing page costs nothing to make. They have the whole framework in there already. I think the, the picture probably cost a couple of hundred D, uh, DKK. So here we start finding out if people interact with something that does not exist. So here we're interacting with this saying, we need some data from you. We need your name, what's your educational background, your age, etc. What we also need is to find out where do you want to go? And they probably had some beliefs about, okay, where we sell the more, uh, uh, the, the, all the travels, but that's, that's more a, a, a travel, a, a vacation, where this is a job, so it's a different thing. So again, uh, let's kill the gut feeling about what country, and let's find out what country that people are interested in working abroad. And by doing this, they found out that the US was the primary market. Contact US uh, job agency and say, Do you have some jobs that we can post on our page in order to make this real? This is a prototype and explain what it was. And what, the, what happened was this got some jobs. What do they find out here is they find out what kind of jobs people click on, how long they sit and read about this, what level, back to the educational level, what level of jobs should they have when they once, if it succeeded, they, they launched. 
And when you click on a job, you find out actually that, well, there is a job. I can actually do the application. What is very important in prototyping is not to say, ha ha, it doesn't exist. Well, what you do is you say, thank you, dear client. You just helped us a lot. Here's a, here's a voucher for something for, for, a, for a local grocery store or something like that. Like I said, thank you. So the thing is here not to, to kind of cheat people, but it's actually to interact with people and say, if we do this, if, we, if more people like you have gone through the funnel and found out that you, you're, you're doing the job application, can we get back to you if we do this as a product and a service in the, in the, in the future? And this is where really a lot of companies, I mean, like McDonald's in the US, like, like Audi, Ikea. In Denmark, also the large companies are doing this because they found out that this is a fantastic way to cheap, fast, get some predictions on, is the market ready to do this? The Predesigning Manifesto. Well, read it yourself. It's, it's self-explanatory. The thing is here, that I want you to do something now. Now is better than later. And with this video, I really, really hope that you have been encouraged to start using prototyping. It's easy. Four hours invested and you can start working with this. Actually, as I said, the tool is, is ready. There's six techniques you can start applying today. Whatever product, whatever service you have is applicable today. So thank you and have a fantastic day.